the day is finally here, the day when we're gonna build 10 gigabit network. Yes! <laughs> And this is Alec and this is my tech review. Today we're gonna go and build 10 gigabit network. Yes, the finally the day is here and we're gonna build it with Unify solution because I have Unify network at home. So logically I will build everything on a Unify as well. Okay, so currently Ubiquiti and Unify got uh, two versions of 10 gigabit switches presented on their product line. One of them had 16 ports and that's the one we are getting and the other one got only six ports. Price-wise, we are pretty much identical, but the content of the switches is completely different. So the first one with 16 gig, I got 12 SFP ports, uh, which is SFP plus, so they are capable of 10 gig and they require additional SFP to be inserted for the fiber optic connectivity for LLC cables. And the other ones, the four ports extra, are actually RG45 based Ethernet 10 gigabit capable ports. So those uh, actually can be connected with CAT8 or CAT7 cables which are providing uh, speeds like 10 gig uh, on the network. The data model of the switch is only got 6 ports and for small infrastructures that would be kind of ideal solution but not exactly because that switch got only 2 SFP plus ports which are capable of 10 gig and 4 ports which are RG45 based 10 gigabit ports but they're also powered over Ethernet ports so you can connect access point with XG extension uh, to actually get high speed on your access points. Uh, so therefore, the price-wise, they're pretty much identical. But uh, for my needs, I would not be it would not be enough for me to get only six ports. So we're gonna get 16 ports enabled, and most of them will be used right away. From the price perspective, it uh, makes sense even financially because the switch is around 700 Canadian, 500 US. If you got the same configuration using like MicroTik or stuff like that, then to build the similar config, you're gonna pay either the same money, but you're gonna have power management issues, cooling issues, and some other stuff, or you're gonna pay even more. This video is about unboxing. We'll see what is inside, what Unify gives you. And we're also going to adapt it to the network. We're going to adapt it inside Unify controller. And we're going to also make sure it's ready to accommodate my 10 gigabit network needs. Okay, so here's a box. Like anything with Unify, you have a nice packaging. Like it says Unify XG16 switch right here and it says 10 gig 16 port management aggregation switch. So let's get open up. Let's just unbox that. It is heavy, so you need a good grip on that. Okay. And this is basically what you're gonna get inside. So these are the mountain brackets for the rock mountain, which we're gonna use. Uh, there's a power cable, here it is. These are the mountain screws for the brackets. Small screws as well. Okay, the instructions, which is basically the manual and think how to mount it up and how to connect it. All right, so here is the actual switch. Let's put it up. that anymore. Okay, so here's the switch. So as you can see all SFP plus adapters are actually closed up. That's the power connector back to DC 42 volts. If you want to connect it directly to DC power as a backup then you can run that here. And there are two fans and this is a console port. So nothing can see, normal switch. So let's get it up, connect it, uh, power it up and discover it in Unify. So switch has initialized right now, see white light, so it's ready for, it's right here, let me show you, yeah, right here, the white light, so that is telling us that it's ready to be uh, adopted in Unify controller, so I'm going to just connect one cable, this is the, my network, so I can discover it, so I'm going to connect it right here, and we'll see, we should see green light, as you can see right now, there is a green light, 
showing up right here that the switch is connected and it can be discovered okay so here is my unify controller as you can see all my devices are up the, there is some latency and there is like some internet being used right now that's fine so here is my usg 6% used so let's go ahead and see if the device showed up as pending adoption and uh, here we go here it is so ip address got assigned so everything is ready so what we're gonna do we're gonna say adopt and also upgrade so first of all adopt and upgrade that's the one button which you're gonna click because it's recommended for these guys at least i'm not so sure about the ap on unify as you can see my um, firmware level is very low but this is the stable one which is working fine for me everything after that was giving me some issues so therefore i have to roll back to this level and i'm staying currently at 4015 for all my access points but for the switches and physical hardware connected to the network that's fine we can go ahead and update to the latest let's click it up and upgrade I do want to upgrade yes the latest one is 0454 so that's the one as you can see I have on my 8 port switch and on my USG there is different firmware but for the switch it's going to be the same so let's go and say confirm and that will go ahead and up, adopt an upgrade so adoption process was completed now it is updating as you can see it's blinking blue and white that means it's updating and there is a message on unify controller saying that's updating right now the noise level of the switch is noticeable if you have it on your desk you will definitely hear it if that's what you plan to do my recommendation would be to change default fans to the ones from nocturne i will put links in the description down below for those i did that already for my usg router and the benefits of that are really really great because you don't hear the switch pretty much right now i don't i don't hear my usg the noise level is very very low and Nocturne fans are pretty good as well. So if you are planning to have that nearby in your studio or close to you, then the recommendation would be to have the fans updated. Okay. As you can see, device gain provisions, so we're gonna go ahead and change its settings. So I need to change that IP address to because I have the one for all my switches and access points. I have IP addresses predefined as static. I don't use the HTTP for those. And you can see here, it says connected over one gigabit network even though it is full duplex but it is highlighted like that because usually they expect this switch to be connected to a 10 gig and if you for example go on any of those access points connected through 100 meg you will see similar message like that but it's going to tell you that it's 100 meg so let's go ahead and click on that update firmware was done so 4054 the latest so double click on that here is our switch all right so let's go ahead and do change the ip address first so i'm gonna go config and do networks and manage device so using the hcp i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna use static all right get that queued apply okay it's gonna go into provision state right now oh should have changed the name as well that's fine use the side settings for led that's fine okay so that's get updated over here and you can see the IP address is set up. Also what we see here is there is LED indicated on a port, like port 13 right now, it's getting connected. That's port 11, two, so it's one, two, three, four, like that. It's not like all the ports here and then all the ports here. So it's gone vertical, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, next thing we're going to do is going to install two SFPs, which I have, SFP modules. Uh, those are normal SFPs to, to one gigabit adapters, and that's going to go combined together at the trunk. I'm going to go to my network switch, which is Cisco. You don't see it here, but it is there. It's 24 port switch to my main infrastructure, and that's what we're going to use to have a pipeline between this switch and all its connections for 10 gig to my primary network. All right, so here is the SFP modules. They're from Young Youngly. Uh, this is a good, good rating on those, and uh, they have connectivity between SFP, because these ports on the switch, they accept SFP and SFP+. Plus. So we're gonna use those to get SFP module, and that will have on the other side RG45 for one gig. So we're gonna, inst we're gonna install two of those. Uh, this is how it looks. Pretty straightforward, nothing fancy. And I would have two ports connected from my switch 
directly to these ports on the 10 gig switch and that would have a trunk or aggregation between the two. In case of 10 gigabit network you will use whole throughput if your port is capable to get 10 gig and the system is capable enough to get enough CPU power to drive that 10 gig you will see 10 gig. So the way you install it is this. So you're gonna, we're gonna take this out. I'm gonna install it in port 1 and 2. That's gonna be easy for me to connect and manage my ports. So I'm gonna go like this and the other one will go to the other port. Okay, those two are now connected. The first thing we're probably gonna test is I'm just gonna unplug that port from here from the primary connection and try to use one of those on the top. Let's see if that's gonna lead up. Okay. And we should see LED blinking up over here at the port 1. Once I got switched on the ports from my port 13 to port 1, we'll see this thing over here on the green light as well. So it tells you that the name is SFP plus 1, but even though it's just normal SFP, you can accommodate that. And you see that status is 1 gigabit full duplex. And there are packets back and forth, some information about serial number for SFP. The part number shows SFP 1000 base T and there is a voltage and everything you need for temperature all the statistics are there right right now it's just a matter of connecting that into my infrastructure and getting ports connected to um, these SFP ports over here for 10 gigabit connection okay so here it is the system is installed right now unfortunately my tail my cables between uh, SFPs the duct cable direct connect cables they are too short so to go from the server which is over here to this guy from the back end. I would need to order the longer cable. For now I just connected the bridge so I have my infrastructure connected over to the primary switch and I have my internet connection is going to the one of the ports over here. So it's all get distributed through this 10 gigabit switch. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna continue with this setup and the next episode, uh, hopefully by that time I'm gonna get my cables received and ordered. So I'll have my direct attached cables connected to this and this port over here, to port 1 and 2. So the idea here is to connect Synology now somewhere over here on this port through 10 gigabit as well. And that way my VMware infrastructure will have a 10 gigabit backbone and that will have increased throughput for the access from my VMs. Alright, so that's the current setup. You see here the card, dual ported card. That's the 10 gigabit card and this connected through direct connect cable. And it's going to this machine to 10 gigabit card as well and it's connected through this cable. The cable switch I'm using are these ones so that's how it looks. So there's a direct, it's called direct connect cable for 10 gig. It's SFP plus on one side and there's a copper cable in between and uh, you'll have those in different plans so obviously the, one, the ones I have are pretty short so I cannot use them right now. I still experiment with the cables and with the speed Looks like it's 10 gigabit network is pretty much dependent on how powerful your machine is. You need a lot of CPU power to be able to drive it. And also make sure your PCI Express bus is times 8. It's like not time 1 and time 4 because you're going to have your throughput cut in half or even more. So there is no reason to get 10 gigabit card if your PCI bus cannot drive it. So this machine can, but uh, for now I just have to get and continue with direct attached cables connected. And once I have longer cables, I will have it over here and we will continue with this video. Alright guys, that's it for today's quick video on USG 16 port 10 gigabit switch unboxing and initial install and configuration inside Unify. I also mounted over so it's ready to be receiving 10 gigabit connections. And once I have cables, unfortunately my cables are too short, so I cannot use them right now. I have to actually order the new ones to get this thing connected to my 10 gigabit servers because the cards are already installed, everything is ready and it's working direct connect between the two machines. I'm gonna get another video on that. That's it for now, thanks for watching, thank you for staying with me till the end. If you like this video, you know what to do. Click share, click subscribe, make sure you actually subscribe and your notification bell is on. So once I get new cables and the new episode shot and continuation of this one. So stay tuned for that video. With that, I'm signing off, peace.